I mean, you're telling me I don't look sexy while doing this? <laughs> Hi, I'm King. I'm a professional chef, and these are my $228 hot dog ingredients. Hi, I'm John. I'm a home cook, and these are my $18 hot dog ingredients. Here we go again. No. Come on. Okay, I can work with this. Okay, not as bad as I expected. Lots of things I recognize. Neon green relish, it's greener than my eyes. Do you have green eyes? No. Am I making my own hot dogs here? I've got some ideas for this tray. Let's go, bring it on. So I have here Chef King's recipe book, so hopefully I can figure out how this all goes together. The hot dog I was planning to make was very special. It was a smoked chili cheese dog with pickled onions, homemade mustard, and gaufret potatoes. I don't know what that means. I had a heritage pork shoulder. Oh, okay, that's not pork belly, that's pork shoulder. That I was gonna grind, process, stuff, and smoke to make my own hot dog from scratch. Oh. Sheep casings, I'm pretty sure that's made from intestines. And I had everything I needed to make a homemade pork chili. Pork, pork chili? Quick pickled red onions. It's a full meal, it's a lot of food. Topped with a homemade mustard. That sounds lovely, I've never done that. And some fancy gaufret potatoes on the side. That's easy, I could figure that out, but, but what does gaufret mean? It was gonna be bussin'. I was gonna make a Chicago style dog, which is a classic hot dog, poppy seed bun, bright green relish, all the fixins. Now I'm making it all from scratch, so. With John's recipe, I have ingredients you can find in your local grocery store. These might be on the simpler side, but with a little technique, a little love, we're gonna make some super hot dogs. So if I had to guess, I would say this would cost about $150? What? $228 for a hot dog? That's just silly. If I had to guess, all these ingredients be about $22. 18, I was close, you know, four bucks. So making hot dogs from scratch. John, you have your work out ahead of you. So this is Chef King's recipe book. All ingredients, no recipe. The hot dogs are made from usually leftover meat, you know, lips, ass, and snout. But the cool thing about making your own hot dogs is we get to decide what meat goes in there. And that's why you're using this heritage pork, beautiful pork. And that really kind of elevates this hot dog already without even putting anything on it. So this looks like a lot and I've never made my own hot dogs before. Can I talk to Rose? Hey Rose, it's so good to see you. Hey John, what are you making today? Homemade hot dogs from scratch, which I've never done before, so would love any tips that you have. First thing first, you're gonna keep all of your ingredients super cold. That's gonna be really key for making good hot dogs. You probably have some fat there and the pork shoulder. You're gonna take that, you're gonna cut into one inch cubes, and you're gonna get rid of all of the skin and any sinew so that you just have the meat. And the fat to meat ratio is about one to three. Voila, pig for days. <laughs> and put it back in the freezer so you want it nice and cold. Then you're gonna take your seasonings, which is gonna include pink salt, a cure. You're gonna combine Combine all of your spices and that just a little bit of the curing salt. Whoa! Okay, this is the coolest thing I've ever done. And then you're gonna bring everything together and whiz it around in a food processor with a little bit of ice. You gotta keep it nice and cold so that your hot dog mixture doesn't smear all over when you're putting it in the casing. It does look like the color of a hot dog. This is it, I mean, we did it. We did it, fam. There's a couple things you wanna keep in mind when you're filling the hot dog casings. You probably have basically a tube and a machine that's gonna do the filling for you. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to just jimmy the cheap intestines onto the tubey. Gah, go on. Make sure that your casings are nice and moist. Little bit of moisture is gonna keep the casings nice and pliable, which is really key to avoid any blowouts. And I know how this looks. Tie a little knot at the end and pierce it just a little bit so that any air can get out. You're going to very slowly control the hot dog and kind of press with the other hand. Ah! And you're gonna just kind of move the casing along, pressing gently so that you remove a lot of the air. Ah, ah, ah. Thank you so much, Chef King, for allowing me to make hot dogs today. This is best. Once you have your casing filled, you're going to make your hot dogs about six inches, crimp it and spin it away from you. Then you're gonna move another six inches and spin it towards you. I'm pretty proud of myself. These look like actual hot dogs. And then you're gonna take your hot dogs, 
you're gonna smoke them briefly. So you're gonna take about a deep, maybe four inch hotel pan, put some moistened hickory wood chips in there, put your hot dogs in the perforated pan on top of the wood chips, cover it, put it in an oven at about 225 degrees Fahrenheit for about 90 minutes. You're gonna be so happy with these hot dogs. Thanks for everything, Rose. Bye. I see in front of me uh, my ingredients for a Chicago red hot hot dog. Chicago, I love you. Uh, not as much as New York, but you still got some love. We're gonna go a different route. I love tater tots, but instead of just taking them out of the bag and frying them or throwing them in the oven, we're gonna make some loaded hash browns. Let's start with onions. Not crying, not crying. Tomato. We're gonna keep everything kind of a uniform cut, small to medium dice. The sport peppers. It's hot, yeah. It's very native to Chicago. They're like a pepperoncini, but a pepperoncini is a little bit more milder. Now it's time to make the chili for our chili dog. I got my oil perking here, and then I'm gonna get these onions going. Sliced, diced, ready to go. This I know how to do. We're not gonna open up a can of chili. You're gonna make your own chili, and we're gonna use that ground pork that we had from that nice shoulder. All right, this is getting nice and brown, beautiful. This is the part where you have to be patient. Got some salt, cumin, chili powder, and I'm just gonna mix it all together. You know, chili's one of those things that tastes great in the winter, but man, it probably is really good on a hot dog too. I'm very excited for this chili dog. Now my onions are nice and caramelized. I'm going to add our friend tomatoes. Now I'm gonna add in my beans, and then we have some tomatoes. You hear that nice water content in these tomatoes? It's almost deglazing the pan. Hint of sweet, some sugar. Secret ingredient, the chilies in adobo. This will give it that really nice flavor. This is looking good. We're gonna add in our sport peppers. It's actually a great mix, you know? You have these sweet onions, you have these juicy tomatoes, and our sport peppers are pickled. So we're gonna have sweet, we're gonna have kind of sour, we're gonna have spicy. I'm gonna mix this all together and let it come to a boil. So this is gonna be our filling for our hash brown. So what you wanna keep in mind, we need to cool this down. We can't work with it when it's, when it's this hot. So let's just spread this out on this uh, sheet pan. So as you can see, the tomatoes have released some of their liquid, so we now have a beautiful sauce in there. So you're looking for a chili that, you know, it's not a runny, soupy chili, but it's, it's gonna be like a little saucy, you know, from your tomato. And I let this simmer for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna put it aside and make the next dish. It's time to dive into these tater tots. I left them out so they come to room temp and we're gonna transform these into something different. This might be a little, little harder than I thought. Yeah, I, as you can see, they are falling apart. Uh, ideally, a little bit of egg and some flour and we would be able to have, uh, have it stick together for a patty. We, I don't have these ingredients, but I do have this bun soaking in water. We're gonna use this as a binder. This is what's called a panade, right? It's basically taking bread soaking it in water or milk, squeezing it out, and using this as a binder. This baby better come to the rescue. So now I'm gonna make some galfret potato chips. So as you can see, I have a guillotine in front of me. Now, this is a mandolin. Um, never used one before, but gonna be super safe. What we're gonna do, John, you're gonna use a French mandolin, and you're gonna slice your potatoes going diagonally on one end, and then when you slice the next time, you slice it going diagonally on the other end. Pretty cool, you can actually see the ridges on it. It almost looks like a Ruffles chip. I'm gonna toss these in some water so they don't brown, and then we'll fry them on up. So I had our sport peppers, sauteed onions, sauteed tomatoes cooled down. We're gonna throw that into our mix. Wow, it's coming together. I think this will help it bind too, look at that. In Chicago, when you start making this and selling them, you know where to send the checks to, right? Celery salt, they take celery, dry it, pulverize it, and mix it with salt. So you get the essence of celery. Our pickles. I'm gonna add our neon green relish to our hash brown mix. I like how this is looking. I mean, remember a minute ago it was just falling apart in my hand, but look, I have like a patty now. Now the big thing is when we fry this, will it stick together? That's the million dollar question. I have these beautiful waffle cut potatoes. We're just gonna fry them up about two to three minutes in some oil, and then once they get golden brown, they'll be ready to go. So our patties are formed, and I am ready to fry. So we're probably gonna go like four to six minutes on this side, and then flip it to the other side. Ooh, mama. They're sticking together. Uh, the bread definitely helped. Go about another five to seven minutes and we should be done. All right, let's take these out of the oil. Wow, these look awesome. They're a beautiful golden brown color. I love potato chips, so I'm very excited about these. I'm gonna take these out now. These look pretty good. I'm just gonna hit them with a little sea salt, a la salt bay. Put a little bit of salt on top. Normally I would flip it to the other side as well, 
but I'm kind of happy with the way these look right now. I don't want to mess with the vibe. Look at that, homemade potato chips or galfret potatoes. Yeah, so if you've been to New York City, you know the hot dog carts I'm talking about. You know, here in New York, we call them dirty water hot dogs. But the toppings you get are these onions. It's this cool sweet and sour onion glaze that goes on top of your hot dog. So we're gonna recreate that today. I don't have all the ingredients to make the exact replication of it, but I'm gonna get pretty damn close. So now I'm gonna make some pickled onions, which will serve as a garnish for our chili dogs. You know, when you're pickling, sometimes people think, oh, it takes a long time to pickle, and it does. But with a quick pickle, it'll be ready within minutes. So we have some vinegar here, salt, and sugar for some sweet. And I'm gonna let this come to a boil and make sure that all of the sugar and salt crystals have dissolved. Oh, there it goes, it's doing its thing. So our onions are looking great, nice caramelization on them. Now I'm gonna add in our tomatoes. They're gonna be sweet and sour. You know, there's a lot of acidity in the tomatoes, but there's also some sugar in the ketchup. And I think the combination of the tomatoes and the ketchup will make like a nice saucy onion. Now we could cook it slowly, right? We're just gonna kind of reduce it. And you can see those sliced tomatoes I put in, they're, they're breaking down into the sauce. So we're gonna let that cook out for a little bit. And in this lovely mason jar, I'm gonna put my sliced red onion, sliced beets for a little color. I love beets. Oh, that's it. We are good. So, New York hot dog guys, the vendors, I, I got love for you guys. This is a, it's a great topping. So now I'm gonna carefully pour my vinegar mixture over my veggies. Let the pickling action begin. That's about it. I think we have our New York style hot dog vendor cart. Onion toppings, steaming hot. Got the facial going on too. And I'm gonna seal it tight with a lid. Give a little shake so that it gets nice and liquidy. Now I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit and then they'll be ready to go. Okay, it's hot dog time. So we're not really gonna go in the bun. We're gonna be making tot dogs. Yeah, tot dogs. So think of a corn dog, but we're not making a corn dog batter. We're making a tater top batter, right? What, you have, you've never seen buns in a blender before? That's the name of my next band, Buns in a Blender. So we're gonna add some water in there. A blender is a little different from a food processor, <laughs> but we're gonna, gonna make this work. All right, so let's make some mustard. First up, I'm going to grind the mustard seeds. Let's take a look. Ooh, it's funny, now it actually smells more like mustard. Very cool. Next up, mustard powder. And I'm gonna add some cold water and then mix it all together. Now that this is all combined, I'm gonna let it sit while I chop up some fresh tarragon. I mean, these are fancy hot dogs, so we gotta be fancy. So I'm gonna add the fresh tarragon, some apple cider vinegar, some honey, thick honey, and then last but not least, some salt. As you can see, it already looks like mustard, which is great. And I'm sure with all those flavors, it's gonna taste so good. Almost enough to get the cheap intestines out of my nostrils. Mustard and tarragon are like peanut butter and jelly. They go together really well. I'm just gonna pop it in this jar and then let it sit for a bit. All right, so our smoothie's ready to drink. We're gonna use that as a batter. So right now we're just gonna batter our dog, roll it in our tots, and fry away. Rolling in the batter. Yeah, it's gonna get a little messy, you know? There's nothing wrong with that. And I love how this is working out, this batter. So now we're just gonna cover our hot dogs with the potato product we have here. You know what this reminds me of? This is, you guys have the Korean hot dogs yet? This is like very similar to the Korean hot dogs, right? My hot dogs have been in the oven smoking for a while now, so I'm gonna take them out, check the temperature, and make sure they're fully cooked. Hot dogs look great. They actually look like real hot dogs. The color's right. They do that weird sweaty thing, I guess the meat sweats. Yeah, this is really exciting. They, they look like actual hot dogs. Mission accomplished. My dogs are crusted with tots and we're ready to go into the fryer. Oh, I love it, look at that. I can smell the potatoes cooking. I can see they're already forming a crust, but we wanna be patient. We don't wanna move them around too early. Maybe another minute maybe, we're gonna flip these. So next I'm gonna check the temperature just to make sure they're fully cooked. I know Rose said I wanted it about 160. Perfect. All right, check this out. That's what we're looking for, right? Gold and brown. And I'm touching it, it's, it's feeling crunchy. Love it. Those bubbles are telling me that the liquid is cooking out of our potatoes, and that's what's gonna make it crispy. I'm just gonna turn like a quarter turn. Drop in these hot dogs. Woo! Beautiful, wow, look at that. Now we're talking. We've reached the color that I'm looking for golden brown, they're nice and crispy. We're gonna pull them out. Our hot dogs are looking amazing. They're crunchy, crispy, golden brown. These hot dogs look great. Not to toot my own horn, but these look really, really good. I, they came out much better than I expected. 
This is what we've all been waiting for. It is time to plate. Yeah, really excited about this. Like this is way more effort than I would ever put into have a hot dog, but I hope it's gonna be great. So our first step here is we're gonna put our dogs on a stick. Ooh, you hear that crunch? I'm just gonna go right in the middle. Traditionally, I would do a little mustard on one side, my hot dog right in the middle. So we got ketchup, just to kind of make it look, look a little cool. Ketchup and hash browns. Let's get our dog right here. Some of this beautiful homemade chili. Let's start off with our pickles. Some of the pickled onions. Ooh, these onions, I love these. Look how these came out. I love how they came out. Just lay our onions right on top. Then I'm gonna do a little bit of shredded gouda, cause it's a chili cheese dog. Neon green relish, make sure you get that in there. Sport peppers here, go here and here. And last but not least, the scallions for a little color. Holy hell, this is a work of art. If you have neon green, then we need some bright, bright yellow mustard. And there you go, bang, bang. And this is my take on John's recipe. And then I'm gonna take my gaufre potatoes and just ever so artfully arrange them. And this is my take on Chef King's chili cheese dog. It came out exactly as I wanted it to, but I can't wait to try this and check out John's. This took a lot of work. It was a labor of love. Freaked out at some point, thought I was gonna fail, but we got through it and I, I, I'm really excited to taste it and see the results. Ooh. Beautiful. Hey King, what's up? What's up, John? Good to see you. You too, how are you, man? I'm excited to taste your dish. Yeah, I wanna taste mine, I wanna taste yours. Let's talk about hot dogs. <laughs> love a hot dog. <laughs> That is not what I expected <laughs> at all. Chips and dogs, this is what I expected. <laughs> and, uh, it looks good. Should we dig in? Let's dig in. Oh boy. Mm. Wow, that's delicious. Still tastes Thank like you. a hot dog, but the tater tap wrapped around it, totally different from the Chicago style dog that I was envisioning. Let's try these hash browns. Mm -hmm. Green relish, everything, everything that goes on top usually I put in here. Mm. Mm. That's good. Very cool. I mean, the colors are amazing too, mm -hmm. beyond the taste. Yeah, you know, I was, uh, it's that green relish. It's like the essence of the Chicago hot dog. The green relish and the uh, sport peppers. <laughs> it kind of looks like something you get at a fair. <laughs> but like, I don't know what fair would offer this, but <laughs> some fair would. So now you gotta try what I made. I can't wait. Mmm. Whoa. That came out great. Ooh, there's a kick in there. The there's mustard. The, the mustard. Let's see how they try. That's a homemade that's potato chips. That's a gaufret. Gaufret. That's a gaufret. That's a gaufret. Mm. Would oh. I ever spend this much time and money making a hot dog? Probably not. <laughs> but this was a lot of fun. I got something for you for next time, in case you don't want to go all through this again. I got your Chicago hot sauce. It's a sauce I make. We donate pepper seeds to community gardens. They grow the peppers and we buy them back. And we make a hot sauce. So next time, just open up a pack of hot dogs. You have to go through all that again. Awesome. Thank you so much. This <laughs> is great. Yeah. All in one bottle. All in one bottle.